Anyone who spent enough time mushrooming in California's forests will have encountered a phenomenon that we call the mushrump or the uh, shrump. This is basically a product of a mushroom attempting to avoid drying out by fruiting lower under the layer of duff to keep moisture in the gills while the spores are developing. If you saw this walking through the woods, you might not at first suspect that there's a mushroom under it, but after enough years of mushrooming, a trained eye will pick this out as a definite fruiting. So we're gonna uncover this, find out what's fruiting under it. The first thing you wanna do when you're uncovering a mushroom is to just be careful. If you wanna keep the mushroom intact, remove a little bit of the top layer first until you can see the cap of the mushroom and then start digging. There's the mushroom. Wow, that is a big boy. The next thing I'll do is pull away some of the duff near the base so I can pry the mushroom out from the very bottom rather than having to cut the stem or try and pull up. Then you risk breaking the stem. So slide your knife down to the very base of the stipe and pry up. There you go. Your first question after uncovering a mushroom is, what genus is this? You don't have to get the species right away, figure out what genus it's in. You'll notice this very distinctive structure at the base of the stipe. It's one of the most distinctive structures in all of the mushroom morphology that, that you'll see. This is called a vulva. It's also called the universal veil, and it's because it enclosed the entire mushroom when that mushroom was young, a little button. This tissue covered it entirely, so it was universal. It covered it completely. There's only a few genera of mushrooms that have this structure on them. The most common one and probably the most familiar to beginners is the genus Amanita, and that is in fact what we found. This is Amanita ocreata, one of the most deadly mushrooms in California. All right, so let's get familiar with the development of an Amanita fruit body from the button stage through to maturity. Stage one, the cap and stipe are entirely enclosed by the universal veil tissue, the annulus and the gills are completely hidden, and the vulva has no free edges. Stage two, the stipe has lengthened enough that the cap has emerged from the universal veil, the vulva has a free rim all the way around the base of the stipe, and the partial veil is beginning to detach from the edge of the cap. In this stage of development, you can see that the partial veil, which was covering the gills, has dropped down, the gills are ready to release their spores, they're almost mature, and they're now exposed to the air. So I've cross-sectioned one of the buttons of this Amanita ocreata. It's actually slightly older than a button because you can see that the cap has emerged from the edge of the universal veil tissue here. This outer membrane is the universal veil. When it's at the base of the stipe like this, it's called the vulva. If there was any on the cap surface, we'd call it warts or patches. I made this cross-section because I wanted to illustrate exactly what the partial veil does. The gills are still covered. The spores are maturing, they're not ready to be released, so they need to be kept safe from insect predation and from dehydration. This membranous veil allows the gills to stay moist, to stay protected until they're ready to release their spores. On the other side of the fruit body here, you'll notice that the partial veil has ruptured, and those gills are getting ready to mature, getting ready to release their spores to the wind. Here is a mature fruit body of Amanita ocreata. An interesting thing about this particular fruit body is that the partial veil, this annulus, has come off entirely. It was barely clinging to the stipe when I found it. If you were to find it in that condition, you might think that it didn't have a partial veil, but you can still see this obscure ring zone where the veil attached itself to the stipe. That's important to note, especially in the genus Amanita. The last specimen on the right here is a bit atypical for Amanita ocreata in that the stipe is really robust, really trunky. It's very large and fleshy compared to these more gracile, more typical specimens. You'll notice that in the progression of this fruit body from the egg stage to this really mature fruit body, the cap has gone from very hemispherical, almost rounded, to very flattened out and slightly uplifted. That's to maximize the amount of exposure the gills get to the air current surrounding the mushroom so that the spores that are constantly falling from the gills get caught in those air currents and dispersed to new locations. Amanita ocreata is what's called non-striate, which means that there are no ridges or parallel lines running around the margin of the cap. Amanita ocreata looks virtually identical to the white form of Amanita phylloides, which is the only other member of that section in California. They can be told apart immediately with a drop of potassium hydroxide. 
Amanita phylloides shows no color change, while Amanita ochreata turns distinctly yellow. So all of these are very fresh fruit bodies. These are really nice specimens. These are the kind of fruit bodies you want to have around when you're keying a mushroom for the first time because they're not decomposing, they're not rotting. How do you know when a mushroom is rotting? How do you know when it's too old? It looks like this. There's a lot of yellowing to the gills here. The cap just came off. This stipe is no longer together. There's maggots all through this. The yellow colors or brownish colors, that's a very typical thing for mushrooms to develop as they get older, as well as a soft texture, a foul odor, often crinkled gills, a rolled in edge of the cap.